What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the MySQL database with Flask and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at using the MySQL database. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books. One type fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we set up SQL Alchemy and we set up a database table using SQLite, the database SQLite. SQLite 3 comes with Python. It's already installed. We don't really have to install anything and it's super easy. The problem is it's not really a production level database, right? You need something with a little more power. And in this video, we're going to look at MySQL. Now, in the next video, we'll probably look at Postgres. But in this video, I think showing you how to go from SQL to MySQL, you'll see just how incredibly easy it is to swap out databases using SQL Alchemy. You may be able to figure out the Postgres on your own, but we'll get to that part later. So, so we've got our user list here. We've got a few things listed here. We want to switch this from the SQLite database to the MySQL database. Now, I'm just going to throw away this data. So all this stuff in here, I'm just going to toss it out. We're not going to try and migrate it over in this video. That's not what this video is. In this video, I just want to show you how to set up all of this with the MySQL database. So the first thing we need is the MySQL database. So let's head over to mysql.com. And this is the website and click on downloads. Now there are paid versions, free versions, all kinds of different licenses. So this could be confusing. What you want is the MySQL community GPL download. So that's the free version. Now I'm on Windows, so I want the MySQL installer for Windows. So I'll go ahead and click that. If you're on a Mac, I imagine the Mac link will pop up there. So we have two things here. We've got this sort of uh, baby file at 2.4 megabytes, and then we've got this main file at 422 megabytes. So this is an installer, the little one. So you can install that and then it will download the big file. I've had hassles with that in the past, so I just recommend downloading this guy right here. So you can download this. And again, it's gonna ask you to log in or sign up, but you don't have to do that. Just come down here and click, no thanks, just start my download. And this, you could save this anywhere. I would just save it to your desktop. And once it downloads, install it. Now I'm not gonna do that because I've already installed it, but there are a bunch of different screens and it can be confusing. Just take the defaults for basically everything. Don't read into it, just take the defaults for everything. At one point you'll get to a screen that asks for uh, a password. You need to pick a password. I just picked password one, two, three, as we'll see in a minute. Uh, pick something, type it in there. Remember what that password is because we're gonna need it. Now you don't have to set up a new user or anything. We're just gonna go with the root user, which gets installed automatically. You may see a screen talking about root, just click yes, next, whatever, and hit the defaults and move on. So, okay, that's all there is to that. You may have to restart your computer. I'm not sure after you download that, but uh, it'll probably tell you a little message. If this doesn't work, try restarting your computer. There's a little setting during the installation that says run MySQL when your computer starts. So you'll keep that as the default yes. So whenever you start your computer, MySQL will start up anyway in the background, so you shouldn't have to worry about it. So, okay, now we've got that. And I should say, if you have trouble with the installation, check my Kinter playlist. I did a bunch of videos on MySQL and Kinter. And in one of those videos, I walk through the download. So I go through all the screens and everything. So you can watch that if you have any trouble or leave a comment in the comment section below. So, okay, we've got it downloaded. We've got it installed. Now, what do we do? Well, let's head over to our code. And in the last video, we installed SQL Alchemy, and we also set up this SQLite database called users.db, right? So we're not gonna be using this anymore. We need to point this to a new MySQL database. Now we haven't created that database yet, so we'll do that in a minute. So what I'm gonna do is copy this and paste in another one of these. And let me comment this out, and let's say uh, old SQLite DB. And under here, let's go new MySQL DB. All right, so this stays the same, app.config, SQL Alchemy underscore database underscore URI. The only thing that changes is this address. So what we want here is MySQL, and then colon forward slash forward slash. And now we want, actually, let me just comment this in as well and paste this in. And let's look through this really quickly. So we want MySQL colon forward slash forward slash. Then you want to put your username. Then you want to put your password. Then you want to put localhost because we're hosting this on our computer. And then you want the database name, which we haven't created yet. So for username, come back over here. 
right here, we want root. That was set up whenever you set up the MySQL database when you downloaded and installed it just a minute ago. So that's our username. For the password, I picked password123. Now this is open. If you push this up to GitHub, people will see your password. So I'll talk about later how to hide that. But for now, just getting this going, we'll just put it in there like that, no big deal. All right, then we put at, and now this is gonna be localhost, right? Because this is where the actual database is. If you're doing this online with a database online, you would put the URL for the actual database. And we'll probably talk about that later when we push this whole thing up to the internet. And now we just want the database name and I'm gonna call this users. Okay, so that's all there is to that. Now we're gonna have to modify this a little bit and I'll show you why in just a second. So, okay, we've got this thing. Now, in order to use this, we have to first create a database. Uh, when we did our SQLite database, we didn't really have to create it, it just sort of created it for us, but now we have to specifically set up this users table. And there's a bunch of different ways you can do that. You can download something like WAMP or CHAMP, or maybe even the, the MySQL workbench that got installed when you installed MySQL, but that's kind of complicated. I'm just gonna write a quick little Python script to create a database for us. It's probably overkill, but it's you know pretty simple, so I'll just do that. So I'm gonna create a new file, and let's go file, save as, and I'm gonna save this as create underscore db.py, and this is just gonna be a little Python file, and we're gonna delete this file as soon as we run it one time to create our database, but eh, for one time, I'll just do this. Now, in order to create a database, we need to be able to connect to the database, so we need a connector, a MySQL connector. So we don't have one of those yet, so let's head back over to our terminal and break out of our server, control C, clear the screen. Now, there are several MySQL connectors and some of them work and some of them don't. On any given computer, the first one might work, the second one might work, or the third one might work. Everybody's computer seems to be different. I've never figured out why. So we're just gonna install all three connectors right here and then hopefully one of them will work. So let's go pip install and this is MySQL-connector and that will install that. And the next one is pip install mysql-connector-python. Okay, and then the last one is my is pip install mysql-connector-python-rf, I believe. Okay, so that's doing that. So got a bunch of error messages for that one. We don't really care, one of these is gonna work. So, okay, so far so good, that should install the connector and one of those hopefully will work. So let's head back over to our create underscore database underscore DB file. And up here at the top, we need to import that connector. So let's import MySQL dot connector. Now, I know we installed MySQL dash connector just now, but we need to put a period here, MySQL dot connector, that's just how it goes. So, all right, let's create a variable. I'm gonna call this my DB, and this will be a mysql.connector.connect. Now, what do we wanna to connect to? Well, we wanna to connect to the host equals localhost. That's where our database is sitting. We want the user to equal root, and we want the passwd. Now, that's not a misspelling. That's how you do it, password, short for password, to equal whatever password you picked when you installed MySQL. So I did password one, two, three, very complicated. Okay, so, okay, let's call this my DB. Okay, so, all right, we've got our little connection here. So now let's create a cursor. So my underscore cursor and set that equal to my DB dot cursor. And my DB is just our connection we created here. So a cursor is sort of like a little, a little robot or something that will go and, and do commands for you, right? It's a little automated thing that does stuff to the database, right? So what do we wanna have that cursor do? Well, we wanna create a database. So let's go my underscore cursor dot execute. And let's go create database. What do we wanna call this? We wanna call it users. So this create database command will create a database and it'll create a database called users. Why users? Because up here, that's what we said right here. This is what we wanna call this thing. So we gotta create it. That's how we create it. So that will do it. Strictly speaking, that's all there is to it. Now, we might, we might run into a problem because I've already got a database called users uh, because I was playing around with this earlier. So instead, let's call this our users just to be 
sure. And we can come back over here and change this guy to r underscore users. Okay, so save this. Now, this will do it, but if we wanna put something up on the screen and make sure that it was created, we could do that. We could just go my underscore cursor dot execute. I wanna execute another command. This one is show databases. Then we also want to loop through all of the databases and print them to the screen to see if this new database was in fact created. So let's go for db in my underscore cursor. Let's just print db. Okay, so that should do the trick. So now if we save this file and run it, create underscore db.py, that should create our database for us. So let's come back here and go python create underscore db.py. And boom, it looks like it knocked out. Oh, there it is, our users. You can see I've got a bunch of other ones too. Code of me. Uh, there's the users one, world, some system things, performance schema. These get created by default when you set up MySQL. Same thing here and here. But we see our underscore users, which is the table, the database we just created. So we're good to go. So, okay, almost there. Now we can come back here and we can just delete this file. I'll leave it in here in case you want to check the code. You know, you can always check a link in the comment section below the video for the code itself. So I'll leave this here, but we're never gonna run this file again. If we did, it would create a database again. So in fact, I'm gonna comment this line out just so if accidentally we run this file, it won't create the user database again and you know delete potentially whatever's in there. I don't know if that would happen or not, but better safe than sorry, so I'll just comment that out. So, okay, we're getting there. Now we've created the database. Now we need to sort of connect it to our app. And you would think that this line right here would do that. But no, remember in the last video, after we created this thing, we had to use the Python terminal to actually kind of import it and turn it on. But before we do that, we need to make a quick change. And the reason why is because SQL Alchemy comes with a driver or something to connect with my database. Well, before we make the change, let's just run this and see what the error is that we would get. So uh, if you remember in the last video, we came over here and we ran a Python shell. Since we're using the git bash terminal, we have to type in win pty and then Python. If you're running any other terminal, you would just type in Python. So here we want to go from hello. We want to import the DB and that seems okay. But now we need to create it. So DB dot create underscore all, just like we did in the last video. And we're going to get an error here. There's no module named MySQL DB. So SQL Alchemy needs a module called MySQL DB. It's sort of like a connector, I believe. And for some reason, it doesn't get installed in our virtual environment. So if we copy this and then exit out of here and try to pip install MySQL DB, it says could not find a version. So I don't even know what this thing is. We could Google it and try and figure it out, but eh. Why bother? There's a better solution that I've used in the past. It is called pi mysql. So let's go pip install pi mysql. And that also requires something called cryptography to uh, sort of uh, deal with passwords and stuff to hash them and hide them and do all the things, encrypt them and all that good stuff. So we need to also pip install cryptography. So C R Y P T O graphy, cryptography. So, okay. That should be fine there. All right, so now since we're using PyMySQL as sort of like the connector, we need to change our URL and our code just a little bit. So come down here to our app config, and instead of pointing this to MySQL, we're gonna point this to MySQL plus PyMySQL. And that's the only change we need to make. So, okay, that looks good. So let's go ahead and save this. Now we head back over to the terminal. And let's win PTY again, run our Python interactive shell. And let's go from hello, import db. Okay. And then we want db.create underscore all. That worked just fine. And now we can exit out of there. Okay. So moment of truth, that should have done it. So let's go flask run to run our app. And we head back over here come back here, come back to our ad user. You'll notice all of that data is gone because that was in the old SQLite database, which we're not using anymore. It's still in that database. We're just not connecting to it anyway. So here we can come back here and let's go John Elder. And this is John at codemy.com. We can submit. One user is added. Looks good. Come back. Boom. There it is. 
here we can try it again. Jane Elder. Now let's go Jane at codemy.com. Submit. User is added. Come back to this page. Boom. Jane Elder is there. So this is working. We are now using the MySQL database and it was just that easy. Now, it seemed like a lot of steps here, but it really wasn't that bad. We just have to download and install MySQL. Then we manually created a little, created a database. Now you don't have to do it this way. If you know a better way, if you have Champ on your computer, XAMP or WAMP, if you're on Mac, I think, or is WAMP Windows? WAMP is the MySQL Windows server. MAMP is the MySQL Mac server, I think. So if you have MAMP, WAMP or Champ on your computer, you can create a database in those if you know how to do it. It's a lot easier. You just right click and create a new database. I didn't want to go through setting those up. Also, probably the MySQL Workbench, which comes with MySQL when you download it, you could probably use that. But again, I didn't want to mess with it. So we just created this little file to create our database. And then it's just a matter of reconfiguring our database URI. So here in the last video, we just pointed it to SQLite forward slash users dot db. And if you remember, if we go to file open, we'll see there's that file right there, users dot db, right? So it's still there. So we could probably, let's see, let's come back here and undo this and redo that. So now we've reconfigured to use the SQLite thing again. Nothing else in our code has really changed, but if we come back here and reload, now notice we've got two in the MySQL database. We've got four in the SQLite database. So it still exists. We can still connect to it. We can still use it, but we don't want to because now we've got the MySQL one. And to use the MySQL one, all we have to do is comment this out and re uncomment that. And it really just, the only difference is you're pointing it to a different direction. You're pointing it to a different database, right? That's really when it comes down to it, all we've done, we've changed the location where this thing is pointed. It's not pointing here anymore. Now it's pointing here. The rest of our code stayed the same. All of this class code, that stayed the same. Our template code on our user HTML page, that all stayed the same, right? All of this stuff, that stayed the same. All of this form stuff stayed the same. And that's really all of this stuff, all of our form validation and all that stuff, adding it to the database, right? Adding a new user. All of this stuff stays exactly the same. We don't have to change it because we're using a different database. That's the beauty of SQL Alchemy. It abstracts that all away. So you don't have to learn how to do it for MySQL or Postgres or SQLite. You don't have to learn any specific way to do it based on the database. You just do it the SQL Alchemy way and then SQL Alchemy converts it into the way it needs to be done for MySQL or Postgres or Mongo or SQLite or any of the other databases you want to use, which is why we love SQL Alchemy. It abstracts that away. So pretty simple. That's how we do MySQL. Now you could probably figure out how to do Postgres. You just need to know what the Postgres URL looks like. And that's a two minute Google thing. If you already have Postgres installed on your computer, create a new database for it, point your URI towards it, and you should be able to use it. It's, that's just that easy. We'll probably go through it just in case, but uh, maybe I'll figure that one out on your own. So give it a try if you want to use Postgres, which we probably will end up using Postgres. It's a little bit better than MySQL. They're both equally okay, but Postgres is a little bit better, just a little, right? So we'll probably talk about that in the next video. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over a hundred thousand students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.